Yeah, they can't. Good morning everyone, I hope you are well, I hope your family's all okay and uh, I hope you're coping without school and with the confinement to your houses. It is doing my head in as well. Uh, anyway, we're going to keep going, this will be the last lesson and then we've got our Easter break which is going to be a bit weird because I can't be in the break anyway, but uh, I'm not going to be doing any GCSE lessons over the Easter. If any of my class is watching, I will be emailing you uh, details about your mock results and uh, the uh, individual questions you got right and wrong so you can be working on booklets on that and I'll give you details about that later on uh, today. Okay so we're going to work on inequalities today which is a topic which is quite varied in the types of questions they ask about it and it's the kind of ones that if you don't know what you're doing you just leave them completely. So some of it's quite easy, some of it gets quite difficult towards the end and it will rely on you being able to solve equations for the last bit. If there's any younger people here, you'll be absolutely fine with the first bits of it. And if you can solve the equation, you should be able to do the whole lesson. Okay, so we're going to start with some warm-up questions. Okay, so there the first questions are. Adding fractions, please be careful with that, one very important one uh, in terms of making sure you get the bottoms uh, the same first. So five questions shall we go at and then we'll go through those in a bit. As always, any problems at all, please send a message on the chat and I will try and get back to you. I'm hoping it's working a bit better than the last lesson in terms of the speed of the messages coming through. So I'm not sure I was speaking loud enough, uh, Ben got a bit of a sore throat, but uh, just uh, to let you know, we are starting on these questions here, and then we'll be moving on to the inequality work, which is the main topic of the lesson. So there's five questions, there we go. Uh, some of them are a bit tricky this time, the last one, be really careful with that minus sign when you're expanding and simplifying, and uh, some names and numbers, so I've chosen some slightly mean questions this time, so see how you get on with those. Please let me know if that volume is better as well.
you ever stuck with a ratio question as well? The bar method we use for fractions works really well for ratios too. So think about splitting that up into your ratios. That's all it is. I'll even put a little hint for that on the board. That is a brilliant way to do ratio questions. By all means, if you know another way, if it works for you, absolutely fine. It's a great way, particularly for the harder ratio ones you come across. Any problems with any of those, please just send a quick message with a few more minutes on this and then we can get on with the inequalities. Okay, I'm going to go through this so we can move into the, uh, the main part of the lesson. If you just turned up, don't worry, we're going to, this is just a warm-up, then we'll be getting on to the, the main activity. So first one, three-fifths add five-eighths. So if we're doing three-fifths add five-eighths, we need to get a common denominator, because we can't add them together unless the bottoms are the same. So we look at a multiple of five and eight, ideally the lowest one, so we're looking here at 40. So we're going to change both of these fractions to over 40. So this fraction here, if, I'm, if I've got five pieces there, if I'm multiplying that by 8 to get to 40, I'm going to need 8 to times that by 8 as well. So 3 times 8 is 24. So we're making an equivalent fraction. We do the same with this one, except for this time we times the bottom by 5. So we times the top by 5 as well to give us 25. We can then add those together. Really important, you only add the tops. We're still in 40th. We've got 24 pieces of a cake split into 40. 25 pieces, we're still talking out of 40. Which gives us an answer of 49 over 40. And you will be expected to put that as a mixed number because that is more than one. Now 40 out of 40 is a whole one. So that's one whole one. We're going to have 9 40 it's left, so we've got 1 and 9 40 it's. Okay, the ratio 1. So we're sharing 63 pounds out between all of these boxes here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 boxes. 
So divided by seven gives us nine in each box. You can actually draw these in, which means this person in total gets 27 pounds and this person gets 36 pounds. It is such a good way to set out ratio questions particularly for the harder ones in that way. They're really mixing together different problems in a worded question. Okay, minus nine, negative nine plus negative three. So negative nine plus negative three. When you see this double sign here, if you can circle them, it's a double sign. A plus and a minus is the same as giving yourself a bank fine, giving yourself a penalty. So it's the same as subtracting. So you can get rid of that and put a minus there. So we're on negative nine, we are going down three, it's going to take us to negative 12 for that one. Quadrilaterals that have two pairs of parallel sides. So parallel sides are lines like that, that go in the same direction. So all those with two pairs of parallel sides, you've got a square, you've got a rectangle, you've got a parallelogram, and you've got a rhombus. So those are all the shapes with two pairs of parallel lines. A trapezium only has one pair, so a trapezium would not count all those four would. And the last one, question five, this minus sign is really tricky there. Uh, let's make some space there. So if you've got four lots of two X plus five, minus two lots of two x minus three. We are going to expand those brackets by multiplying by the number in front. So four times two x is eight x, four times five is positive 20. This is where it gets tricky. I'm so many people make a mistake on this. Negative two times negative times two x is negative four x. That one's okay, it's this bit here. Negative two times negative three is positive six. That is a positive there. You still might have got the right answer if you thought about it slightly differently, so we'll see. 8x minus 4x is 4x, then we've got 20 plus 6 is positive 26 for your final answer for that one there. Just be really careful with that negative sign. I've seen it gone wrong so many times and people just get one mark out of two, or sometimes it's out of three. Depends on the mark scheme. Okay, right, so on to inequalities. Okay, so the four kind of things you're going to be doing is using inequality symbols, listing integers that satisfy inequality, these are exam questions, inequalities on number line, which is often completely forgotten about, and solving inequalities. There is another very tricky topic, which we're not going to cover today, to do with plotting inequalities as straight line graphs. That's a whole lesson in itself, very tricky, and since the GCSE has changed, it has not come up once. That doesn't mean it's not going to come up but it's one of those things that you've got to be clever with your GCSEs and just do the more common topics first. Master these ones and then get on to the really tough grade five stuff. Okay, so I'm sure you can order this to start with. We've got, this is a past exam question, so have a look at the numbers there and all you've got to do is put one of these three symbols in the boxes to make those statements correct. So you've got 14 and 21 there, so you need to choose which one of those symbols goes in that box to make it correct. So have a go at that first. I'm hoping you're all okay with this. Whatever year you're in, as long as you're happy with these symbols, then we can do that. If you want to remember which way to put it, if this is a crocodile's mouth, the crocodile always eats the biggest number because it's greedy. So the biggest number goes on this side of the inequality sign. And obviously an equals means they are the same. So have a go at those. And then uh, we'll go through those, just going to give you, give you two, three minutes for that. And then we'll look at the more difficult stuff, which you might not have seen before.
Okay, so first thing you need to work out is which is a bigger number. So in this first one here, the obvious one is 21 is bigger than 14, so our inequality has to go that way round because the crocodile eats the biggest number. This one here, you will need to work them out first. That's 11. If you work that out carefully, you get 11 as well. So those are identical. They are the same. Squaring means multiply by itself. 2 squared means 2 times 2. So this is the same as 2 times 2. They're both 4, so this is an equals as well. And negative slightly tricky. Remember, if we think about it in terms of money, negative 5 is much worse than negative 3. This is more money than this. So it's going to go that way round. Okay, hopefully no problems with something like that. Easy grade question, but it, these are the kind of questions you need to make sure you're not making any silly mistakes with. You are getting them right every single time. Right, so on to something slightly more difficult. So this is listing integers. So first of all, an integer is a whole number. It can be negative or positive. They are no, you're not allowed to include any decimals. Zero does count as an integer as well. So it's any whole numbers, negative and positive. So you've got to understand this inequality. N is the number you're thinking of. And this is saying that N is bigger than negative 2. And this symbol, because it's got the extra line there, means it's less than or equal to 5. So you are allowed to have 5. N is allowed to be 5. It's certainly not allowed to be 6 because 6 is bigger than 5 and n needs to be less than or equal to 5. So we're going to list them and you always want to do it in order. So you are not allowed to have negative 2. You will be allowed 1.9 but that's not an integer because the first integer you could have would be 1. Then you'd never be allowed 0. Uh, negative 1, sorry. Negative 1 would be the first one, then 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. So we've got negative 1 to 5. And you need to list all those numbers to get them up to it. This one, definitely more difficult because you've got a 4x in the middle. So before you start listing integers, you probably want to simplify it. But if you did try, so for example, you could try putting 2 in there. 2 times 4 is 8, which is not small enough because it's, well, it's not big enough because it's got to be bigger than 8. You could put 3 in there. 3 times 4 is 12, so 12 is okay. But that gets quite confusing. So what I would do first is simplify the inequality. If this is 4x, we are going to divide everything by 4 to give us 2. This is just x now. And 32 divided by 4 is 8. That is a much easier inequality to work with. I'll just write that on the board in case it doesn't show up too good on the TV. So I've just simplified that to 2x greater than or less than or equal to 8. And then you can list the integers. So I would always simplify it first. So we would then list... 2's not allowed, but 1's allowed, 2's uh, not allowed, but 3's allowed, 4's allowed, 5, 6, 7, and we are allowed 8 because it's under the line. So that's listing integers. So we're going to have a quick go at that. This is probably the easiest part of inequalities, apart from the very basic questions. So you should be getting, if you're looking for a grade 3 or higher, you need to be looking at getting these questions right every single time. So let's have a go at a few questions on that.
So you see, the ones on the left are definitely the easier question and they get more difficult when you've got something else in the middle. These ones need to be guaranteed marks. These ones are definitely more difficult. We're looking really at grade four work here and here we're looking at your grade three work. And this keyword, integers, does come up a lot in other things you need to know what that means. So try not to say whole number as much, just try and use integer when you mean whole number. It means the same thing, but this is what you'll get in an exam. Right, okay, we're going to go through these. We can always come back to later. The video will be saved if you want to do some more work on this and there's some of the exam questions too. But I want to get on to the other type of question as well so we can look at, try and cover everything we've done. Right, so first one here in terms of your integers, I'll do them on this board because it shows up better. So, in fact, the answer's here. What am I talking about? Okay, so there your answers are in that. Uh, oh, it's supposed to be red, but it's coming out orange. Uh, the answers for those questions. So just check uh, your work. You can see they are simplified them first and then list of the integers. Just be careful and take your time with these. These are not supposed to be too difficult, especially if you follow that first step of just simplifying. You're basically solving an equation, only it's an inequality, which we're going to look at for the last part of the lesson as well. Okay, so just let's give you 30 seconds to just double check all your answers on that. It is about accuracy as well. These are the marks you can't afford to lose. If you know you can do a question, if you know what to do, you've got to make sure you get full marks in it. It's a big, complicated question where you're thinking, you know, I'll be happy with two out of four on that question or one out of two. And once you know you can do, you need to make sure you get all those marks. It is tough to get a high grade at GCSE maths. I'm well aware we don't know there's not going to be any proper exams this year, but still this kind of so this work you're doing, if you're submitting this work to your teachers, if you're sending it in, showing them what you've done, they're going to be looking at that and they're going to be possibly using it to assess you to decide whether you get the grade you want. If you're in a different year, years seven through to ten, then you obviously just need to learn it so you can get it right for next year when things go back to normal. Right, okay. 
this one, this is, I've seen so many people completely miss these questions off because they don't actually know what we're talking about. And it's, it's talking about number lines. Okay, so what it's saying here is, the question will say, show this inequality on the number line. So this is P is greater than negative 1. And it's really, really easy to do, but some people overthink it. Think if it's greater than, not greater than or equal to. And they look like this. You put a dot, a circle on the number line. So our circle is going to go on negative 1 there. So we put a nice circle there. And then we point which direction we're allowed to go. So we will point this way. And without moving the 2D too much. The answer is going to be like that. You then look at the dots. At the moment, if I stepped on that, I would fall through the middle of it. So I do not want to step on that. Which is great because I'm not allowed negative 1. Negative 1 is not allowed. It's greater than negative 1. So you leave it clear in the middle, so you can fall through it. If it was greater than or equal to negative 1, you could then colour it in to show you're allowed to stand on it. It still goes on negative 1. This one here, so t is going to be between negative 2 and 4, so you put a circle on negative 2, we put a circle on 4, and then again we join them up with a line. There's no need to put an arrow because it just goes between those two. Now, we're allowed to colour one of these in. We can colour in this one because it's allowed to be negative 2. So that will be coloured in like that. So your answer would be that there on the number line. One coloured in dot, one hollow dot that you can fall through because you're not allowed to have four, and then you join them up with the line. And that's what it's asking you to do. It's another way of showing an inequality. So just going back to the other way, then I ask it. They were asking for this question here, where this time they show you the inequality and they'll say what inequality is shown on the number line. And you need to write the answer for what it is. So the first one we know is there is going to be an x, in, the, in fact it's not going to be an x, it's going to be a p, because it's p here. Okay, so there's going to be a p in the middle. We know there's going to be a negative 2 and there's going to be a 3. Always falling in my head again. So you then put your inequalities in. It's going to be bigger than negative 2. It's going to be smaller than 3. And then we decide whether we can underline any of our inequalities. Now it's allowed to be negative 2, so we can put our line on the negative 2 there. And that's your final answer. So it's going backwards and forwards, depending on which one it's asked you to do. Draw it or give the inequality. And it just takes a little bit of practice and being taught it. It's amazing how many pupils I've come across at GCC, but after GCC, they say, I've never been shown that before. Some of them might just be saying that, but I think some of them have completely missed this topic out. Maybe they've missed the lesson on it, maybe they've been off, or maybe they just haven't been taught it. So it's one of those things you just need to make sure you know how to do it. And when it comes up, there's quite a few marks from them as well. Okay, there's some, in one of the papers just recently, there were about five marks for stuff on number lines and inequalities. So it can be a big topic. Right, have a go at these, please. So just five questions. Uh, you might want to draw yourself a quick number line on your whiteboards or on your, uh, uh, or in your books, and then you're plotting those in the number lines, and then those ones you are trying to write down what they are. Okay, so five minutes to try and complete those questions. Just going to try and move it a bit closer to the TV, that's a bit small, some of those.
hopefully that's a bit clearer of this image on small screens. So if anyone was just trying to put an example on the board of just what one of these inequalities looks like. I hope that's just an example kind of question showing that inequality means the same as that inequality there. If you want to do the same thing on the questions on the boards. If anyone needs any help as well, please uh, just uh, let me know. Yeah, if you need help, possibly other people do, so anything I'm putting on the chat might help others as well. Okay, right, let's uh, show you the answers for these now and we can move to the final part of inequalities and then look at some mixed exam questions where it puts everything together. We know we covered quite a bit today, all to do with the same topic, but as you can see, the questions are very different. They really are. It's all based on inequalities, but they're very different questions.
Right, so there you answer that. So uh, the green lines are the answer, the green numbers are the answers there. So you, that's exactly where your dots should be. You just put the circles in, join them up, and then colour them in. Okay, if there's only one circle, you just point an arrow which way you want to go. You don't normally have two circles. A few of the easy ones only have one circle. And on these ones, I always start with those numbers, put the X in the middle, and then put the inequality signs in. Those ones are underlined because you can stand on them. This one, you can underline that one, but not that one there. Okay, so it's just getting used to what to do with these, and it's the kind of thing to not completely forget about, to revise it again just before you need it, because it's just that jogging that memory. Because if you do it just once, you're going to forget something like this, because it's a bit weird. You don't really see this anywhere else except for the maths exam. It's not potentially the most useful thing to learn about, these kind of inequality lines, unless you're in a very specific job, but it's easy marks if you practice it. Easy, easy marks, not much thought required for it. Okay? Right, last thing to do with inequalities. Okay, now if you are not able to solve equations, you might want to skip this part and have a go at the exam questions because I'm not going to go through in loads of detail how to solve equations, but it's all to do with this. So if you've got inequalities here, all you are doing is solving them. It says solve. It won't even say in the Oh, not again. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm not allowed to turn into my wall. Good catch, though. Uh, right, okay. So, if you've got an inequality there, okay, just give it to breathe because I'm sure that looked pretty funny on the video. Uh, so, we are solving it. So, however you solve equations, I do not mind. But that might as well be an equal to what you're doing to start with. So I'm going to take away the 7 and then divide by the 3. So if you're using a function machine, take away the 7 divide by 3. If you're using balancing, where you take 7 from both sides, it does not matter. So I'm going to minus the 7. I'm then going to divide by the 3. And then that's going to leave me with for my 34. 34 minus 7 is... Uh, 27, then I'm going to divide it by 3, gives me 9. But you need to write your answer down as an inequality. So your answer is this. X, same sign there, is less than 9. So you want the same sign, less than 9, there. If you put an equals down there, or just 9, you're only going to get 2 marks out of 3. Maybe 1 mark out of 2. You've got to write it down as an inequality. Okay? I'm very scared to get this actual wipe up in here. Uh, let me see how much of the board you can see. Okay, I'll put the second one on here so you've got another example. So this one, harder equation, 5x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 7x minus 9. So we are going to, first of all, on these ones, you get rid of your smallest x coefficient. So the 5x and the 7x, the 5 is smaller than the 7, so we're going to take that 5x away from the 7x. So you're going to end up with a 2 on this side. So 2 is greater than or equal to 2x minus 9, because 7x take away 5x is 2x. We then solve the equation, so we're going to take away the 9 from the 2, and so we're going to add the 9, because that's a minus 9, so we're going to add 9, so that gives us 11 and 2x, and then we're going to divide this by 2 to give you 5.5 is greater than or equal to x. Okay, so it doesn't ask for an integer, it asks to solve the equation. If it says to solve it, that's your answer. If it said, what's the biggest integer, then you can change it to an integer after that. Alright, so that seems to be smaller than 5.5, so the answer would be 5 is an integer. Two slightly different ways of solving equations or inequalities. It's up to you which one you use. If you use a different method for solving equations, that's fine. Just understand you need to treat it a bit like an equation, but write your answer as an inequality. Okay, last worksheet on the board for you. Just five inequalities to try and solve. Okay, good luck.
Okay, I hope everyone's okay with these. Please let me know if you're not. Again, very different type of question to the other ones we've been doing. Uh, it's just it's a, a big topic, I guess, inequalities, but it, the variation of things they can ask you to do with them. Let's copy the last three questions on the board. There's a few issues with uh, some of they can't see them. Uh, Okay, just one more minute and then uh, we'll go through some answers and look at the uh, exam questions. Uh, you did really well today, a lot of content we got through. Okay, right, we'll go through the, uh, the answer now, seems like a lot of you have finished, which is really good. I'll put the answers on the screen, and I'll go through some of the tricky ones on the board, I think. In particular, D and E can be quite difficult. Okay, so if we look at D, it's just your negative numbers. You are going to take away the 7 from the 17, from the negative 17 though. So negative 7, take away 7. It's not negative 10, you get more negative, so it's going to go to negative 24. Then divide it by the 8, gives you negative 3. So your answer is x is greater than negative 3. On this one, you're going to take the 3x away from the 6x to give you 3x plus 8 is greater than or equal to 38. Then we're going to take away the 8 and divide by the 3. So 30 divided by 3 equals 10. x equals, not equals, I was going to do what a lot of pupils do then. x is greater than or equal to 10. 
it doesn't really matter how you solve equations. Okay, a lot of you will have been taught balancing. Balancing is brilliant. It keeps it really accurate going along the way. But this is just as efficient as long as you're doing inverse operations. So instead of a minus doing a plus, instead of a times doing a divide, it does not matter. Whatever you're comfortable with, as long as you are organised with what you do and you can go and check your work for mistakes. Okay, right, we're going to look at the exam questions now. Uh, so the exam questions are posted just uh, before this one. Hopefully you got those already. You can print them off or just look at them on the screen. So have a go at those and we'll go through just a few of them uh, in about five minutes just before the end of the lesson and then you can do the rest for some extra work. So have a look at the exam questions, please. I'll put the first on the board as well for you. So that was the first one there, nice and straightforward, but you get this on a GCSE paper. It's not all really difficult, there's some nice straightforward things there, as long as you understand what inequalities are and what the question is asking you for. So have a go at that question, or you can jump ahead on the sheet that I attached to the, uh, to the page uh, I think it was yesterday night or this morning, I can't remember. Okay, off you go. Okay, just if you're fine with this, go ahead. I'm just going to go through D one more time. I think the negatives are confusing people a little bit. <clears throat> so the question is there. The first thing you need to do is think about your opposites for this inequality here. So it's 8x plus, I'm just going to put this just so people know it's a 7. So 8x plus 7 is greater than negative 70. So the first thing, in terms of working backwards, the first thing we're going to do is take away 7 because that's a plus 7. We are then going to divide by 8. So those are the two stages you are doing. Take away 7, divide by 8. Now this is already a negative 7. So if you've got negative 17, this is already a negative 17. So 0 is down there. Negative 17... Oh, sorry, I completely cancelled that. Negative 17 is there. 0 is there. So there's your kind of number line. If I am taking away 7, I'm going to go that way, 7. That is minus 7. I'm going to go that way, 7 spaces. So negative 7 take away 7. Negative 17 take away 7 is going to be negative 24. You are then going to divide it by 8. Now, negative 24 divided by 8. A negative divided by a positive comes out negative. So that will be negative 3. So my answer is x is greater than negative 3. Okay, hopefully that makes a bit more sense for that one there. Done the one on the board if you want. I'll just go for this one quickly, just at least give you the answers. Okay, so you should have uh, t can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And that was an actual GCSE question from a few years ago, so that could easily come up again. Something very similar to that. The next on the sheet, remember if you've got the sheet in front of you, if you've got it printed out, you can just go ahead on those. The next one is this question here. Okay, a number line one, just like the ones we did on the board, so they are always very similar. You can kind of predict the types of questions that will come up. So here's the number line, write down the inequality shown on the number line. Again, this is a GCSE question from last year, I think. It might have even been this, it might have even been November. Can't remember, but it's definitely a proper GCSE question.
Okay, right, I'll just go through this last question on the board here, and then uh, you can get on with those GCSE questions. As always, I will post the full work solutions to the whole sheet, uh, either later today or tomorrow, to give you a chance to do them first. So this one here, just like the ones we've done, we're going to start at minus 3. We're going to have a 1 there as well, an x in the middle, and we know x is going to be bigger than negative 3 and less than 1. And then because this one we're allowed to stand on because it's filled in, we can underline this one. We fall through that one, so we can't underline that one. And that is your two marks answers. Two marks for that. Two marks for just understanding what to do. Very little thought process in it. Take your time, be careful. Okay, so that's all the inequality stuff really. There is one more very difficult thing to do with that, as I mentioned at the beginning, which is about plotting graphs of inequalities. Very tough topic. Uh, it's one of the, it's generally more on the higher paper than it is on the foundation paper, but it could still be on there. Okay, so that's something you can maybe look at. Might come back to it another time, but uh, you know, who knows how long we're going to be here for these kind of lessons. So there's not going to be any over the next two weeks in the Easter. There will be, I'm going to try and do a kind of one Easter game session, but more for primary school uh, children. But uh, please, you know, have a rest over Easter. If you're here now watching this, brilliant, all right, you've been working really hard. If you're watching, I know a lot of people are saving these videos for later and watching them, which is great for the GCSE ones. So if you have been working hard, then have a good rest over the Easter uh, and uh, try and get back to it two weeks after. So I'll post what the next lesson is going to be after the two week break and uh, I will see you later. Thank you very much. Bye.